we'll, uh, yeah. start our worship service very shortly. So we'll say good good morning, happy Father's good Day morning. Uh, to those morning. Who are, who are nurturing and guiding. We do have some uh, some prayers requests. There was a uh, a wedding. So congratulations to Tina and Josh. Um, we do have a a member whose health is is failing. Um, that's Paul. So we, we hold those in our prayers. Um, Come on down. Come on. Thank you, my mom. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to mute everybody. I understand that um, for the sake of our audio that that's working a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So hopefully uh, when we get to the group responses, we'll be able to um, unmute as you need to. And I think Jack Schwartz, are you the lector today? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna mute everybody for now. Good morning. And you do have the ability to unmute yourself if if you need to. But we are gathered this uh, third Sunday after Pentecost, and uh, I do recognize that we are going green on Friday. So there's some excitement building about that. Um, as as leadership as a church we're not ready to fling wide the doors quite yet uh, so please do stay posted for that but for now we're going to start worship um father i adore you uh, as we remember not only uh, father's day but god as our father uh, on this day and i'm sorry i had this set up a little bit ago and then some things happened let's see You can see all my emails. How about that? And Kathy's class. We have all kinds of exciting things coming up. You know, three months and I'm still having challenges with this stuff. I'll try this. So let's uh, prayerfully prepare for worship if after the ad. Do an investigation into Christianity. Where would you start? If the resurrection of Jesus didn't happen, it's a house of cards. You sure you want to give me that loaded gun? Oh goodness! There we go. Now we'll worship. Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels are of old, of faithfulness and truth.
from Second Corinthians, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We are gathered this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We gather this morning to worship the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We journey and talk together through the unknown of stay-at-home orders and invisible COVID-19, in addition to the realities of racism and storms, leaving power outages, plus our regular life cares and challenges. A little more than usual, we are reminded that we are sent into the world for holy work, and the Holy One will lead us through our fear to live out faith in God. Please join me for confession. Save us, O God, from ourselves, from racism often cloaked in pious words, from the machinations of white supremacy hidden in calls for civility, from microaggressions thinly veiled in arrogance, from apologies when they don't give way to action from forgiveness without facing the truth, from reconciliation without reparation. Deliver us, O God, from expecting siblings of color to continue to bear the emotional work which is ours to do together. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage for the facing of these days by the power of the Spirit, all for the sake of the kingdom that we share in Christ Jesus. Amen. And a word of forgiveness from Romans for while we were still weak, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, forgiving us all our sin, blessing us, sending us, and setting us free, so that we might bring healing and freedom in his holy name. To that we say together, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Amen. Let us pray. Teach us, good Lord God, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for reward, except that of knowing that we do your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our uh, mini message today is from Matthew 10, sorry, oh. for those of you that cannot see the computer screen, I'm having a, a little bit of a challenge with my computer abilities today, mm -hmm. keep the wrong things. So I don't know uh, all who's on here, but I do wonder if you'd like to unmute yourself, if you feed birds, could you unmute yourself? Mm -hmm. And some of you, yep. sometimes that unmuting gets a little tricky. So uh, what kind of birds have you seen? If you feed the birds, what kind of birds have you seen recently? Four and a half days. Robin. Albert. Uh, cardinals. Bluebirds. Finches. Yeah, Blue jays. Mm -hmm. Squirrels. Woodpeckers. Woodpecker. Yeah, woodpeckers, a lot of woodpeckers. And sweet little sparrows. <clears throat> oh, sweet sparrow. Nice job. Nice connection there, Mary. <laughs> uh, I actually saw goldfinches yesterday. Oh. Right outside my window, too. Indigo bunning. Blue. Indigo bunning. Wow. That's and cool. tufted titmouses are back. All right. And so, as you've seen these birds, do you know how many feathers they have on their bodies? Do you know the count? Uh, no. Lots. Yeah. Well, you needed lots. <laughs> lot, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say that about the hairs on my head, too. I don't know the number. Uh, I know I pick on people. I just cut my husband's hair this week, and he has less than he had before, but I still don't know how many. And uh, one thing that, that we celebrate is that even as we can feed birds and even as we take care of our hair that is growing longer and longer, um, we do not know the number of hairs on our heads. We do not know the number of feathers on the birds, uh, but God does. 
And that is really good news, that God pays that much attention to the littlest, tiniest details uh, in our lives. And to that, I was looking for Ethan on my little, on my little screens here. Uh, there's usually some, there he is, some shouting of good news. Because Ethan, God knows how many hairs are on your head. Maybe even all the numbers of hairs in your eyebrows. And God loves you so much that God wants to pay attention to every one of those tiny little details and love you a ton. And so we can say hooray and yippee. We can shout praises and awesome. And then there's that phrase that you say so well. Praise God, y'all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and Ethan, one of the great ways to praise God is to put God first in our lives, just like uh, God puts us first in so many ways. And so uh, I'm going to ask you and anybody else that's, that's uh, unmuted at this point, how do you put God first? What does it mean to put God first? Praise him all the time. Praise him all the time. Excellent. With everything that we say and we do. Anybody else? What's it mean to you to put God first? I pray to him before I head to work for the day and night. Great point to pray before you go out and do things. First thing in the day or last thing at night. Or a whole bunch of times in between. I, I try to put his will before mine. And I pray to stop getting in my own way. Wow. <laughs> and that, that whole thing about God's will, Cindy, that's a, that's a big challenge and a, a great, uh, great aim for us to have as baptized children of God. So we put God's will first. We pray. We come together like this. We worship together. Uh, we read in the Bible together. We take care of neighbors, whether our neighbors are uh, birds that we're feeding and watching and celebrating uh, their lives, or whether our neighbors are human beings. Uh, or, raccoons. Out after. or raccoons, yes, pardon me. I don't mean to be partial. <laughs> Thank you. So let us pray. Lord God, please continue to uh, help us to strive for your will. Please continue to be with us in prayer. Please continue to help us put you first while we are taking care of ourselves and our neighbors. And thank you for your incredible love and for the ways that you love us all the way down to the numbers of hairs on our heads or the numbers of feathers that our feathered uh, friends have. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And Jack is our uh, lector today. Jack, can you see the screen or do you want to read your own? Well, I actually, I have it, so. Okay. Uh, first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 20, beginning at the seventh verse. O Lord, you have enticed me and I was enticed. You have overpowered me and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me, but whenever I speak, I must cry out, I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in, and I cannot. For I hear many whispering, terror is all around. Denounce him. Let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be gently shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. The Lord of hosts, you test the righteous, you see the heart in the mind. Let me see your retributions upon them. For to you I have committed my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered my life to the needy from the hands of evildoers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Jack, I'll read these. I hadn't asked you to, to do this. We have uh, Psalm 69 is our psalm today, and it's selections. It's some uh, unconnected verses, but the message is certainly tightly connected. Mm -hmm. Surely for your sake I have suffered reproach, and shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my own kindred, an alien to my mother's house. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen on me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. Answer me, O Lord, for your love is kind. In your great compassion, turn to me. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift and answer me, for I am in distress. Draw near to me and redeem me. Because of my enemies, deliver me. Here ends the readings from the psalm. The second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 6, beginning at the first verse. What then are we to say? Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was re raised from the dead by the glory of his Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that all our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died and died in to sin once for all. But for the life he lives, he lives to God. So you, so you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And a prayer before the gospel. Let us pray. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest, and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, Unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Holy Gospels according to Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 24th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, a disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough. For the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of the master's household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others, I will also acknowledge before my father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a son against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and in-laws against one another, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. 
whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. you. Uh, For those of you who cannot see the screen, the sermon's based on Jeremiah 20. Um, and the picture that I have uh, to go along with it is a fortune cookie. And the fortune on the cookie says, with a smiley face, I cannot help you. Please seek professional guidance. Did you ever have days like that when it seemed like your fortune, uh, even your fortune, couldn't help? It was tough. Think about what Jesus was saying as we uh, said thanks be to God to that gospel. That Jesus did not come to bring peace, but a sword. It's a great one for Father's Day, don't you think? That we'll have son against father and daughter against mother and in-laws one against another. Uh, It's not exactly the message that is an easy one to proclaim. Uh, Jesus did not go the easy way, though. We all know that. Jesus went for truth. And the truth is that when following Christ when following his way, it's not always easy. And that brings us to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was one who started off uh, very young. In fact, uh, when God first called Jeremiah to be a prophet, Jeremiah said, "Uh, you know, God, um, I'm not old enough, I'm just a boy. But that didn't stop God. Jeremiah had a whole lot of challenges in his life, and he complained bitterly about them. And I suspect that you might know uh, some challenges in your own life, too. Thinking about our congregation, I think about that question that we ask even as we gathered this morning, how are you doing? People have asked me that question. I've asked people that question. There's some that just kind of are waiting to be asked that question. How are you doing? It's a simple sentence with an abundance of care behind it. Sometimes life has us down and it feels like we can't go on any further. And then there's that hand reaching out to hold or to pull or to lift, giving that life-giving connection. St. Paul writes about this, when sin has pulled and bound us that ultimately killed the human spirit, that this is not the end because Christ comes for us in the midst. Have you ever had those rough times? Times, you know, like when someone has died, a friend follows up after everyone else has gone and asks, how are you doing? Or if you've been cooped up in your home for months, can anyone uh, imagine what that's like, being cooped up in your home for months? And a neighbor calls to ask, how are you doing? When you've scheduled that test for what might be a new diagnosis and you don't want to tell anyone yet, and a family member asks, how are you doing? When you're expecting a baby and the due date is approaching faster than the preparations, someone from church calls and says, how are you doing? When a wedding was planned and COVID gets in the way and you can't have it, and a loving person says, how are you doing? When you suddenly get laid off from your job after decades of exemplary work, and the coworker writes a test, text to say, how are you doing? Or maybe it's just internal. When you recognize that despite your best efforts, you're still addicted to work or substances or food or sex or gambling or self-harm. Maybe it's none of that. Maybe when we recognize that despite our best efforts of being nice to everyone, that it's not making racism go away. Or despite being polite, It's not helping the LGBTQ community obtain equal medical coverage. Or when being calm and quiet is not fixing our community's issues of violence committed with weapons. We ask the question, how are you doing? How are you doing? Sometimes the truth is, I'm not good. I've got nothing left. Jeremiah has been there. Jeremiah, as I said, was a prophet 
and you know not only that he started young, but for 40 years, four zero years, he went around telling people things that they did not want to hear. He told them that they were sinning, that they were displeasing God, that they were worshiping idols, that their homes and their way of life would be destroyed. This was not a popular message, and that's why he was being ridiculed by his friends. He was telling his neighbors and his family that they were cheating on that committed relationship they had with God. And Jeremiah complained, but that did not stop God. Just like when Jeremiah said he was too young, that did not stop God. When Jeremiah didn't like to be ridiculed because of his dire warnings that had not yet come true, that did not stop God. When Jeremiah hated standing alone against the crowd, guess what? That did not stop God. When Jeremiah had that gloomy message to proclaim in a gloomy time, guess what? It did not stop God. When Jeremiah got angry with God, complaining directly to God, you have seduced me, you've overpowered me, I don't want to do it anymore. Guess what? That did not stop God. In our first lesson, Jeremiah is ready to defiantly put his prophetic foot down against God and say, you know what? I'm just not going to mention God's name anymore. I'm not going to speak it. Jeremiah is saying, I am not good, and I've got nothing left. But then there's that change, right in the middle of the lesson that Jack read for us. Jeremiah recognizes something in that nothing left. And that recognition is that if he stops proclaiming God's message, then there's something inside burning like a fire shut up in his bones. He says, I'm weary with holding it in, and I cannot. Jeremiah cannot withhold God's word. Jeremiah cannot withhold saying God's name. Jeremiah cannot stop, even though the message is a hard one, even though it is unpopular, even though it looks like it's not even coming true for the first 20 years. And Jeremiah is not alone. Jeremiah preaches that hard message. He tells his neighbors and his friends to focus on God to commit their lives to the Lord, to put God first. Jeremiah tells them that sometimes this is going to cause division in the family. Maybe someone will take it seriously and somebody won't. And Jeremiah knows not to fear. Just like we heard in the other readings today, do not fear those who can kill the body but not the soul. Christ goes to that place of despair and lifts us up and out into newness of life. And so it turns the question on its head. You know, when someone you love has died and a friend follows up and asks how you're doing, and then they wait for the whole reply. Or if you've been cooped up in your home and a neighbor calls to ask, how are you doing? And then they offer to bring fresh produce from their garden. Or if you've scheduled for that test that might be a new diagnosis and a family member asks, how are you doing? And then they offer a shoulder for the tears and an ear for the questions. Or if you're expecting a baby and that date is approaching fast and that person from church calls and says, how are you doing? And then stops and lends a hand for a moment while you elevate your swollen feet. When you suddenly get laid off from your job after decades of exemplary work and a coworker writes a text to ask, how are you doing? And then explains that those on the team who are still employed intend to donate their time off to you to help until you find a new job. For those that weddings are interrupted, work is interrupted, family is interrupted, community is interrupted, as we deal with the challenges of race, as we deal with the challenges of inequality, as we deal with the challenges of illness, sometimes it feels like we just cannot go on. How are you doing? Not good. I've got nothing left. But we don't have to. That's where Christ comes in. See, Christ died taking all our sins, all our troubles, all those burdens with him. Christ was buried, taking those sins and troubles and burdens and laying them to rest. And Christ was resurrected, raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, living a new life, walking in newness of life and bringing us into that new life, proclaiming a message of freedom at last, proclaiming an end to enslavement, to sin, fulfilling the promise of life with Christ, not alone. Because sin did not stop God. Death does not stop God. 
Being empty does not stop God. Having nothing left does not stop God. And because he lives, we shall live also. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he lives, life is worth living. God's message is worth proclaiming even on the bad days. And God's hope never ends. Not when ridiculed, not when doubted. God's grace asks through God's messenger, how are you doing? And God's mercy answers burning in our hearts. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Praise God, y'all. We have a message to share. We have neighbors to care for. We have ourselves to make sure that we take care of all that God has given us. And the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So let's go. We have the gifts. We have the ability. Christ steps in. Christ lifts us up. Christ holds our hand and walks alongside so we can do the same. We can step in. We can lift up. We can hold a hand and walk alongside to prove in deed and in word that God is right there giving life abundantly. Now, as we move to the green phase of COVID, we embrace this new freedom with a renewed sense of life. How are you doing? I'm up and down, but you know what? I'm living with God and serving with God and nothing will separate us from the love of God. So may God continue to be with you in the ups and the downs, continue to guide us and keep us always. In Jesus' name. Amen. And I know it's not in our hymn book, but because he lives is such a powerful hymn. <clears throat> I'm going to share that. I think there he is. I know we don't often get applause like that in church, but I think when, when God's at work, that might just lead us to that. Please join me as we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I'm going to play a, a song, if you but trust in God to guide you. Um, I'm going to play it behind the, the prayers today because trusting in God is how we lift up our prayers and how we get through our lives together uh, in solidarity. Uh, the hymn, if you want to look it up later, if you have a hymnal, is the Evangelical Lutheran Book of Worship, uh, 769. <laughs> there it is. If you but trust in God to guide you and place your confidence in Him, you'll find Him always there beside you to give you hope and strength within. For those who trust God's changeless love, built on the rock that will not move. We're called into unity with one another and the whole creation. Let us pray for our needy world, responding to each petition with words from today's psalm. Your love is kind. O oh God, Father in heaven, hold your church in your loving arms. 
Protect believers who face persecution for your sake. Bless the work of evangelists and teachers as they translate Christian faith into other languages. Strengthen pastors and deacons and church councils and leaders for ministry during these troubled times. Hear us and help us, O God. Your love is kind. O God, our provider, here in the north, the summer solstice reminds us of your care for the whole creation. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Feed all your creatures, both animals and humans, with the sustenance we need for life. Guide us to sources of energy that did not destroy the earth you have created. Hear us and help us, O God. Your love is kind. O God, our ruler, inspire our president, our governors, our legislators to work toward justice for all. Lead us to ways of life that are free from racial and ethnic prejudice. Strengthen the world's democracies and strengthen those who are working to secure free and safe elections. Give a home to refugees. Form our military and our police to maintain peace and inhibit violence. Hear us and help us, O God. Your love is kind. O God, our physician, bring healing to all who are sick and suffering. Preserve the world from more waves of the coronavirus and guide researchers who are seeking a vaccine. Protect those whose jobs expose them to contagion. Support our healthcare workers and those who remember before you as we name them here and in our hearts. We pray for those hospitalized, Alverde and Elizabeth, for those in hospice, Claire and Paul, for those homebound, including Betty, Lester, Richard, Doris, Michael, Sharon, Pearl, Leon, Betty, William, Grace, for those in the armed forces, including Lily, Dorothy's family, and Dominic, who will be deploying soon. For all who are healthcare workers, including myself and Dr. AJ and Tammy, for all those continuing to work for our benefit, and for the strength of caregivers giving care for family and loved ones, including Carol, Anne, Judy, Jackie, and Joan. We pray for those with chronic conditions, including Bob, Darlin, Pat, Dorothy, Barbara, Mike, Jim, Brian, Han, and Gary. We pray for Kathy, for Nick, for Kristen and Elaine, for Teresa, Bob, Roy, for Dorothy and Shirley, for Sandy, and Catherine, for Robert, Susan and her family, for Rhonda, Sophia, Joe and Naomi, for Duke, for Jay, for Ken, for Bob with his upcoming surgery, for Matthew, for Teresa, for Carol, for Marcia, Tracy, for Doris, for Joel, for Mary Jane, for Carol and Chuck, for Elizabeth. We pray healing for those with hatred in their hearts, for those that have gone through tragedies, for those who are victims of fires or tornadoes or storms. We pray for those who have tested positive for COVID, patients and their families, especially for Mick, for Chloe and her family, for Rob. We pray for those struggling with unemployment or underemployment or temporary layoffs, including Anne and the 900 people laid off from Reading Hospital. O oh God, Holy One of Compassion, during this month of June, Pride Month, in the days where this work of justice and reconciliation feel like too much, help lighten our load. Soften our hearts to welcome people of all sexual orientations, gender identities, and gender expressions in all of the bodies in which they encompass. Teach us to learn and relearn with humility and anticipation. Hear us and help us, O God. Your love is kind. O God, Holy Eternal One, we praise you for the lives of all the faithful departed the famous, the forgotten, those we lift up to you now, out loud and in our hearts. We pray for Joyce and Shirley, for Jack and Pat, for Harry and Donald, for Bob and Jaden, for Brennan, Betsy and Betty, for Arlene and Rich. We thank you for welcoming each into your arms and your heavenly kingdom. 
And we pray that you would provide comfort and consolation and that through us, you would help us to be there for all those who are grieving. God, our peacemaker, inhabit each household and the land with your powerful peace. Train us to live together in harmony, especially when quarantined together. Nourish marriages and sustain extended families. Protect children from harm of every kind. Hear us and help us, O oh God. Your love is kind. O oh God, Holy One of Joy, thank you for your grace that we continue to be a family of faith while we are geographically distanced. We worship you with gladness and we lift up these joys for Anna's granddaughter's upcoming marriage, for Dana's graduation, for Mary Lou's friend and Christine's upcoming marriage. We thank you for the wedding of Josh and Tina this past week, for the celebration of anniversaries like that of Phil and Mary Lou last week. Lord God, we ask that you'll continue to be in our celebrations and our joys as we come back together, going into the green phase. Please continue to be with all those celebrating and all those remembering. Oh God, our source of life, bless all fathers and father figures as they face both long-standing and emerging family needs. Comfort those who long to be fathers and those for whom this day is difficult. Hear us and help us, O oh God. Your love is kind. O oh God, our beloved, thank you for holding us through the stay-at-home orders and bring us into the green phase with precautions that keep the spread of COVID at bay. And receive now the petitions of our hearts. Hear us and help us, O oh God. Your love is kind. O oh God, our beginning and our end, we bless you for all our forebears in family and faith who have lived and died in you. Remind us of their sacrifices and at the end, bring us with them in your household of joy. Hear us and help us, O oh God. Your love is kind. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I have our Thanksgiving after our prayers today, our offering of gifts. Uh, in the midst of fear and struggle, Christ brings us through as witnesses of grace. God gives us diverse languages and ethnicity, cultures, and backgrounds so that we are unified and not uniform. And God gives us a gift of loving us so incredibly much. Uh, Beth has found a great hymn for that, His Eye is on the Sparrow. So uh, thank you again uh, to Beth for singing and for playing. And Sandy, we're looking forward to hearing you again. Hopefully we'll be able to get to that soon. Helps us remember Herb. Thank you. 
Beth, thank you for that, uh, both memory of her, but also uh, for continuing to bring the word of God to us uh, through music. Now may the God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good cheer. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. And our sending hymn is Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer, and the words will be on the screen. Hymn 618. continue to lift God's songs and praises forevermore. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We do have um, a couple of announcements, so I'm going to ask uh, folks who have announcements to unmute yourself, and then we'll have plenty of time for, for fellowship as well. Um, I think at this point, just a, a reminder, Cindy, uh, you're on vacation, right? At the end of this week? Yes, um, I'll be adding the daily Bible readings remotely, hopefully, um, if it works out. Not this week, but the following week. And I can be reached by phone if, you know, there's an emergency or whatever. So, um, Fun Friday we're going to have to talk about. I mean, this week Wendy's doing it, so everybody stay tuned. Um, but then on, I guess it would be July 3rd. I'm not so sure what we're going to do with that. Pastor and I, I guess we'll talk about that and figure it out. 
Thank you. And I think there is a finance committee that will be happening this week. Um, I don't know, Ken, do you have any more information on that? I don't know if that Ken has information or is uh, muting or unmuting himself. Um, in the meantime, we have some shout outs from the, the every member uh, calls to the congregation are complete. There's a couple follow-ups that need to happen, but these are messages from folks within the congregation from that. Um, the leadership of the congregation is still working hard to find ways to reconnect us. We do have a plan out there um, presently. Bonnie is still not in the office, um, so we will be working through this probably through the month of July as we sort things out. We do have a combined worship service coming up um, with Zion ER Church, and that'll be a, a drive-in service on July 12th, so please keep that in mind. Um, my job at the hospital uh, this week continues with the same hours as the last couple, which is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, 5 to 10, and Wednesday, I'll be working from noon to 10. Uh, so it's best not to reach me on Wednesday for church things. Uh, but thank you so much to all the folks that have done the every member household calls. Um, that's been huge. And thank you to all of you, um, those of you that are connected on the internet, which is many of you that are on Zoom now. Uh, we had a 100% response rate to the surveys, which show that uh, folks are a bit anxious about um, spreading a, a virus and staying healthy and at the same time very eager to get back together. So we'll collate those survey responses and uh, we'll be in touch as soon as we can as, as groups and worship begin to change. We'll be having worship probably broadcast soon uh, in the next couple of weeks from our sanctuary. Um, but we still have to work out uh, who's allowed to come as we'll have limits on the number of people that can be present. So please do stay tuned. Uh, for that. An update now, Bear Creek Camp, as you know, is closed for the day camps and the resident camp, but it is open for those people who would like to go as a family and use the cabins or the tent. So if you call up to the camp He's and would like to do, do that, you can uh, do so. Um, there are also folks that would like to share food from their gardens. So we have a couple requests to start a ministry of a, a table or somehow sharing produce from the gardens with folks that are hungry. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please uh, talk to me. I'd be glad to uh, to work with that. And thank you for those of you that have contributed to the capital campaign. This is the last week, so if you've been waiting, please uh, give any donations at this point. We've raised sixteen and a half thousand of two th of twenty thousand. Uh, we have been able to refinance the mortgage privately at one percent, which is a wonderful, wonderful gift as we uh, take good care of the stewardship. Um, of the finances that we have. So thanks to all that have participated. You continue to be active uh, for the issues of justice going on around us. Uh, there are many opportunities to do that as we mark some, some painful realities of, of our history and recognize the, the growth and the promise that we have going forward. So any other uh, announcements at this time? Pastor, yes. Uh, can you go back to that joint service with E and R? What time is that on that July date? Great question, Chris. It's going to be at ten thirty, so it's the regular time. Ten thirty for, for Zion E R, and it'll be in the Grove. It's a drive up. You can either keep your windows up and turn on your FM. They have a um, a radio transmitter, or you can put your windows down and uh, and listen that way. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I see your hand raised. I'm sorry, I wasn't looking at that part of the screen. And Anna, were you asking something too? Because Anna uh, Winger, you are muted right now. Can you hear me now? Yep. We're still going to have the Zoom service the same day of the joint service down at the Grove. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't we can't know. Can't be two places at once. No, I I can. <laughs> Do some Zoom from my phone. I don't know if I have uh, connectivity at the Grove or not. That's one thing I've not tried. So I think ideally, uh, I know that Zion has been live streaming their services on um, Facebook. 
but I know that some members of our congregation are not on Facebook. Um, so that's a great question. I'll have to look into that. Um, and we'll, we'll try and Zoom, but you're right, it would be 1030 instead of 9. So a great point, Anna. Thank you. Anna, before you go off, I want to ask you a question. I'm here. Okay, spell that word that you were talking about earlier. I'll call you. <laughs> okay. Uh, if anyone else has uh, pictures of, of dads in their lives, you're welcome to, to share those too. And I hope that there is some, uh, for those whose dads are not living, that there's some way of remembrance and those whose dads are living to, uh, to celebrate the, the dads uh, in our lives. Does anyone have any special plans? Chill out. Chilling out. Ethan had a big old shrug. <laughs> Go oh, swimming. Go Tessa, swimming. Tessa, I want to tell you, uh, Jay's mom's home from the hospital. She is. Oh, okay. Good. Excellent. She's doing better, but she, she's down to 100 pounds. She got to eat so she gained some weight. Yeah, uh, eating would be good mm -hmm. to make some schmetzel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Carol Stout's husband, Chuck, is in the hospital. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's back in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Do you know which hospital? Reading. Yes, Reading. Thank you. Okay. Here, I'll hold up a picture of my dad. I don't know if you can see it or not. Whoop, that's my brother. There's my dad. Some of you might recognize him. He's been a pastor at Zion a long time ago. But as you can see, it was a little while ago. Ben is kind of little uh, in my arms. Kind of. Good baby. I'm going to show him your face. Oh. Esther, would you send me the updated prayers as well? Hang on. Yeah, I don't have them all in one place, Cindy. But right. Um, just so we, I'm trying to get them as well. So make sure we get them. Yep. And I think we're about to see Richard Hewn. Morning, Richard. Oh, hi, Richard. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. Morning, morning. morning Richard. Good Hello. Hello. Good see you on this Father's Day. Oh, here we go, Phil and Mary Lou. Can we go get that? Can you hold it closer? That glare is really. There you go. Wow. And can you unmute yourselves and tell us uh, who's in this picture, Phil and Mary Lou? Okay, Phil's dad is in the middle. This was his retirement from Beryllium. His aunt Betty is over here, and his uncle John. And of course, his mother Caroline is sitting next to Kenny. And oh, that's a young couple on the side there. <laughs> Must be his son and, and wife. <laughs> and Caroline's sister is in the middle in the back. Thank you. Sorry for the glare. Well, that's what happens when we're on screens, I think. Well, that's okay. Thank you for sharing. And I see some other pictures. Who's going to go next? Cindy, who's that? Who's that kissing in that picture? That's me kissing my dad, who's been passed for a very long time. He was my buddy. He's the original Anthony. <laughs> and Bob and Barbara, are you each holding up pictures of your dads? Yeah. Yeah. What are their names? My dad's name is Paul Leister. Yeah. He was a, the picture was um, oh my. in the mountains from up at the cabin in Potter County. Oh, nice. Did you know uh, that Paul Swamboxy in the hospice? Right. Bob's dad. Is that Jack Schwartz's dad? Yeah. Yep. Might be. Bob Troxel's dad. And we have, I believe, an Essen wine in here. Yes. Yeah. Here's Otto. My dad is the little tyke in the front. 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> he grew up real good. Weather. The date on the back says May 1943. Ooh, wow. Okay. And Mary Ann's <laughs> might be uh, <laughs> around that time too. <laughs> and what's your dad's name, Mary Ann? Otto. Oh, your dad's name is Otto. Mm -hmm. Good name. Wow. Yeah. How about that, Greg? Yeah. Oh, I knew that though. Uh -huh. And Mary, uh, this is not Otto, I would guess. Definitely not. This is Alan. Alan. Mm -hmm. Bob Troxel, what's your dad's name? Ray. Ray. Thank Ray. You. What a great man he was, Bobby. Yeah, I know. Ah, there we go. Ray is uh, now. Roy is coming up. You see my dad? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking really good. Roy oh. even shaved a bit. There you go. <laughs> wow. We celebrated everything last weekend. His birthday, their anniversary, and Father's Day with all the family outside. Wonderful. This is cool. Nice. And Kathy oh. Begley, I think, has a picture of Max and Betty. Right? Yeah. Wow. That's right. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. And the, the Sunday School today is a Father's Day special. So please stay tuned for that. Kathy has a wonderful uh, plan for today. When it comes to Father's Day things, uh, I have I have an, a problem in that I have a son who has met, has been like the most wonderful father I've ever known to his children. Uh -huh. So right there is the bunch of them. Wow. Way to go. Mm -hmm. Thank you for I'd like to add my son, Brandon, prayers for him because he will not hear from his children again this year. Yes. Wow. Yes. Excellent. And of course, now it says my internet connection is unstable. So if it goes wacky, just like wave vehemently and I'll see somebody. Okay. So, so thanks for hanging around. It's Father's Day, and we'll we'll you know go through. I don't have a whole lot here, uh, but we will take a look at what I've got. Wait a minute, for some reason it's not opening. Opening. Now we got it. Okay, now it's better. Maybe there we go. So um, the the I picked Father's Day as the theme for the day because there wasn't a theme chosen, and I figured this would work out okay. Uh, but but at the same time, I had a problem with this um, because of using it at school, like, you know, when you teach another language, you teach things that people can say, and one of the things was family. Let's do a family tree. And when I started teaching, that was really simple, and it was fun, and everybody had a good time researching. And by the time I got done, that was not the case. Um, so, so. What are some of the problems that come up with honoring fathers, honoring mothers? Well, can you think of anything that's uh, problematic here? Yeah, I don't have any father or husband or son. That's a father. There's no fathers in my life alive. Mm -hmm. So they're all memories. So, so is that hard? Is it good memory? What? How do you feel? Good memories, but it's sad that they're not here to actually talk to, touch, be with. Mm -hmm. It's also hard when it's not a good memory. Mm -hmm. well, some, yeah. are good, some weren't good, but... She thinks more of him than she thinks of me. Mm -hmm. So I had kids at school who didn't know their fathers. I had kids who, you know, had a dad and a stepdad, um, you know, and there's, there's all kinds of families and it was really important to reinforce that whatever they're dealing with is okay. Like, um, I, I went from a family tree to let's build let's make a house or an apartment and who is living there now and let's get titles for those people because i just didn't know exactly how to manage that but i still thought it was an important conversational tool yeah. um 
So, so again, coming to it today was like, okay, so I know that there are people who are deceased. I know there are people who are from split families. I know there are probably people who had problems with, um, you know, abusive fathers or in, in whatever form that takes. Um, but, but I don't think it's a reason that we skip it. And we're not. So if you're not comfortable with it, I'm sorry. It's what we got today. <laughs> um, I want you to know that this is not all my stuff. I went online and I should have gotten the website, but I didn't. Uh, it was, it's from uh, Children's Ministry Deals. It's an online website and I just Googled Father's Day and I found some stuff and thought, I, I think we can live with this. So it, it's not I. So if you like it, it's them. If you don't like it, it's still them. And <laughs> it's okay. And I kind of redid their stuff, but I didn't, you're, we're not just watching that. We're watching their ideas put through my filter. All right. So look, two bills that are there. Which one would you choose? Would you choose the top one or the bottom one? To what? Can you see that there are two forms of money there? We're actually no. we're on your first screen still. Oh, I'm on the second one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's see if it goes to that. If not, we're gonna have to revert to something else did it move to preview yet no not yet no all right let me escape and do you see it now no nope. no not yet hmm. when we did this before there was a delay but i don't think it was quite this long yeah all right, but we did see it move. Did you see it move from all the glasses to, did it move at all from one screen to another? No. No. Okay, then I don't know exactly how to manage that. Hang on a second. Resume share. Got that. We got that. Are you seeing any changes when I'm playing around no. on my screen? I can see you moving to the different parts of your screen and I can see your cursor moving, but we still have the initial Father's Day uh, graphic right. in the center. All right, then I think I'm going to default and give it back to you and ask you if you could pull that up okay. and get us to slide number three. Sure. Thank you. Sorry. That's all right. I'm sorry it wasn't cooperating. Okay. So is this the one you wanted, the theme discussion? Oh, we did that. So you want the preview, this one? That one, preview. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not seeing that right now, but uh, I'm seeing the screen with everybody's faces at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, that means that I'm not sharing quite right. Let's try that. Ta-da. Here we go. All right. Yeah. Uh, yay. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So now there are two money bills there. Would you choose the top one or the bottom one? Either. Both. They're both. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Okay. Ethan, would you pick the top one or the bottom one? Top. Why? Not wrinkly. Ah. <laughs> so is it worth more than the bottom one? No. Yeah. Okay, so anybody, how do you think God sees us? Does he see us as the top bill or the bottom bill? Oh, uh, I think the bottom one. Yeah, we're getting wrinkles. You got that right. <laughs> Both. Maybe God sees us as both. As both. Is one of more value than the other? No. 
Yeah, no, of course not. And it, you know, God sees us wherever we are. And sometimes we are like the top, right? And sometimes we are like the bottom. More frequently, I am like the bottom. Confession out there. Um, <laughs> some form one way or the other, but it, it would be nice to, you know, be polished once in a while. So, yeah. <laughs> but I think so, the one on the bottom has been used more. So maybe it's uh, been a, a bigger part of the world around us. Yeah. Yeah. I know that I found these online. They are not laying around my house. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But they're not worth what they were when we were children. <laughs> Uh, if I take it to AAA right now and change it to euros, they're worth a lot more than they were five months ago. Oh, oh. Huh. Could we move on, please? We should stop up with you. So. <laughs> I have some because I was the one to tell. Oh, oh. oh. Ah, uh, there we go. So that kind of follows along with this, that we are unconditionally welcomed in whatever form we're in. And I wanted some Father's Day pictures, and this is nobody I know. It's, uh, you know, one of the pictures from online, but, but I think it fits well, especially with, you know, people who are cooped up and why bother to shave and, you know, like, can I see somebody? Can I see somebody? Where are we going? Any comments there? Anybody yeah. getting up and feeling like, seriously, why am I getting dressed? Why am I getting a shower? <laughs> why do you think I changed my hairstyle? <laughs> I think I've worn like the same three shirts and two pair of shorts for like three months. <laughs> I mean, I've washed them, you know, but I just keep recycling the same comfy shirts. Yeah, yeah understood for sure. Yes. Can we move down to the next slide? Sure. Oh. All right, so now, I'd like to go to full screen and we'll come back to this PowerPoint then, but I would like, if you feel comfortable, each person who is here, and I'll call your name so that it goes a little, you know, well, I would like you to do a charade, so speaking, of something that reminds you of an activity uh, with your father or husband or or something that you would like them to have done with you But it has to be like charade you show and we will try to guess what that is So I'm gonna go first I don't know how this is gonna work with the background, but but here we go Canoeing rowing, rowing. Rocking oh. on your father's lap not rowing. Rowing a boat. Drive. Motorcycle riding. Mowing the lawn. Mowing the lawn. Mowing the lawn. Wow. And, oh. and, and <laughs> the background, I can't like get up and move around because yeah. it's all disappear. So so and and just like FYI, somebody asked, this is the garden outside of Wittenberg yeah. where Luther took cola and burned it by the oak. That's what's up there. So, uh, how about, how about, Mary, would you do? No, I pass. Okay. Susie is raising her hand, Kathy. Susie. Fishing. <laughs> you stole mine. Fishing. Fishing. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Wendy. All right, I'll try. I thought she was done. Cutting chicken. Chopping meat. Cutting. Somebody, I heard the word. Somebody said it. Cutting, C cutting meat. What kind? Turkeys. Turkey. Yeah. Turkey. <laughs> <laughs> Danny, do you have one for us? Yep. Oh, playing ball. Baseball. Baseball. Yep. You stole mine, Danny. <laughs> Mariana, do you feel comfortable doing one? Not really. I don't know what I did with them. 
<laughs> Ethan, do you have one? Um, I need to think. He didn't even think. I need to what think. do you do with your day? Um, the last thing I did was a lot. Yeah. Just go like this. Oh. You think and then wave to me when you're ready, okay? Hmm. Yes. I don't know. What did I do? Yes. Okay, ready? Ready. Climb a ladder. Climb a picking ladder. fruit. Yeah, oh, picking, picking. Oh, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> and he's reaching as far as he can. <laughs> and staying on the ladder. Yeah. <laughs> Anna, do you have one for us? He's reached too far. <laughs> I don't know how to do it because all I can see is my head and my hands. So I, I don't know how to to do a, a, a motion, so. Swim. Okay, all right, Cindy. Okay. Swimming. 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 Yes, yep, swimming. Ethan, are you ready? What do you do with your dad? I don't know. He don't know, they don't do much. Okay, Pastor. Uh, I, I have, uh, see, I've had more time to think about this. Oh, laughing. Laughing. Thank you. <laughs> Mary Lou, I'm going to think that we can't get to you because I'm seeing just your picture there, but can you like come in and do something? Oh, you're muted still, Marianne. You're muted. Oh, sorry. She's not supposed to use words anyway. Okay. We're going to have to get the whole thing here because this is a machine and this is a block of something and this is the um kind of cutting the something and you'll probably still do this you still see this being done is this cutting it's like a meat or a cheese yes exactly cheese too <laughs> he was a butcher and um I remember going to his butcher shop and getting a piece of just sliced cheese which we take for granted now but when i was seven years old that was a big thing sweetest mm. cheese in the world <laughs> thanks thanks did yeah. i miss anybody okay then let's go to the next picture yeah, the, the cameras are hiding kathy yeah oh oh okay you want to come here well that's okay oh, yeah, let me move wait no that's okay <laughs> Uh, driving. Driving. We went to the shore every summer. Nice. Oh, I wrote a little. Nice. No, that's no, okay. <laughs> Anybody else I missed? Cool. Thank you. Thanks. I hope that that was fun and not too embarrassing. Um, but so, and there were some things that I came up with a, a little bit, sort of, uh, that we can look at the next pictures, uh, the next slide sorry i was pushing the wrong button yeah all good computers don't work when you push the wrong button <laughs> so, so no, that's okay we still how are moms and dads different dads have beards ah <laughs> okay. i didn't even think about that but you are you are probably right <laughs> my dad probably kissed me and hugged me more than my mom yeah so Jan, could you say that again? Oh, I said my dad probably hugged me and kissed me more than my mom. Mm -hmm. My dad did a bunch of both. So my, I, I lived with my dad only for a while. So my dad was my mom and my dad. Well, my dad was very strict. He had to listen. You're like, listen. Yeah, my dad was my mom and my dad for a while too. Um, and well, then he was in the army in the war. Was he in the war? Yeah. Well, my here. mom was my safety. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. I was safe with mom all the time. Yeah. She took care of us. 
My dad was the one that would do silly stuff if we were going to do something silly. Uh, he would often instigate that. We were allowed to curse around my dad. Mm. We weren't allowed to curse around mom. <laughs> Not us. No, my dad smelled like sawdust and my mom liked flowers. Mm. <laughs> oh, we probably could curse around my dad too. <laughs> my mom never said a curse word. All right, let's look at the next slide. So these are some pictures that the next two slides are ones that I came up with of things that maybe maybe dads do, maybe they don't do, um, you know, like, I, and I think roles are kind of fluid now, but you know, you think of a dad being a coach, maybe you think of a dad helping with homework, um, maybe not, maybe that's mom's thing. Maybe it's dad's thing to do the math and mom's to do the like humanity stuff. I don't know. Uh, dad getting, getting the treats because mom's going to watch for the nutritious meals and dad's going to like, mm -hmm. you know, give the things that maybe aren't quite as uh, nutritious perhaps. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's just a fun thing. And let's look at the next picture. <laughs> and maybe dads are your playmates. Nope. Maybe they're the provider, traditionally, I guess. But, you know, uh, again, roles have changed and things are different. And that top one, I tried to find something that was like a mentor. So that's what that's supposed to represent. That's cool. And can we move on? So I really like this quote and it had to fit in here somewhere. So this is where it goes. The delicate balance of mentoring someone is not creating them in your own image but giving them the opportunity to create themselves. <laughs> uh, I think that's a good Father's Day quote. Mm -hmm. Very good. Plus, who doesn't like Steven Spielberg, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Could we move down to the next one? Sure. All right, so you may have seen this picture before if you did the art thing with me, and maybe you remember it, maybe you don't, but guess what our scripture support is for this lesson? The prodigal son. Oh, well done. <laughs> so that happens to be a sketch from Albrecht Dürer. Actually, it's not a sketch, it's a um, print. So it's like carved in wood, reverse and then they used it to do printing if that makes sense wow that is remarkable detail for a wood block yeah it's amazing wow yeah and if you happen to go to the Dura exhibit at the reading hospital maybe oh i want to say maybe it was there four or five years ago this was one of the blocks that was there So what it, this is the prodigal son. Anybody know where that is in the Bible? Luke, I think. Mm. Uh, so let's go on to the next screen, and that has the scripture. So I think you all know this, but I'll read it for you anyway. Uh, Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, 
how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let us have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Everybody's heard this, right? Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Anything you want to say about this before we move to the next slide? Um, I actually lived that one with my daughter. Mm. When she was a teenager, she kept running away. And Philadelphia's finest found her three different <laughs> times and brought her home. But the last time, they just said, what's the point? And we left it go. A couple months later, I got a phone call. Uh, it was dinner time. Jack and I were making dinner for the boys. And I answered the phone and it was Veronica. And she said, Mom, can I come home? And I said, of course you can. This will always be your home. And two days later, she was back home. Wow. And yeah, it's a pretty awesome moment. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And what a gift that she called and came back to a loving family. Well, she was also had just found out she was pregnant, but that was okay too. <laughs> Now, we, we also know the second part of this story, and we're not going to get into that part today, but that's the part about the brother being just a, a little upset that this celebration was going on when he was there all the time. So again, we're not going to get into that today. We'll save that for another time, but let's look on the next slide. So what, what, do, what do you expect of God the Father? Forgives our sins. Because fathers act all different ways. Yeah. Fathers are role models, they're mentors, but, but, and sometimes that's positive and sometimes it's a negative role model. Yeah. <sighs> I just expect unconditional love. You know, I don't think a father on earth, I don't think anyone on earth can do that as purely as God the Father can do it for us. My expectations of God is to uh, accept me as I am and help me to go the way I should go. I think God as Father gathers us together and inspires us. And of course, you can read the second question that's on there. So how does, how does our expectation of God the Father differ from 
what we thought or think of our, our earthly fathers. And, and I kind of said, you know, in introducing it, that uh, all fathers are, are different and we have positive and not so positive thoughts when you, you hear that term. Um, yeah. Anything else anybody wants to say here? No. All right, then let's move on to the next one. Now I put some pictures in here, I think for the next two slides. So you tell me what we're looking at here. What do you, what do you think of in terms of the pictures that are here and how do they relate to Father's Day or fathers or a heavenly father? I think for me, there's a lot of connection. My dad was a librarian and a pastor, so the one with the Bible open <laughs> and dad uh, with kids circled around, my dad was the one that brought, um, brought God's word into the house, but also encouraged us to read lots and lots of good th things. And I think, you know, that God the Father gives us the living word of Jesus Christ, uh, which, is, which is that gift to a whole different level. Oh, now I see. On the other hand, my father was totally the opposite. I don't ever remember my father hugging me. He never ever read to me. But we did things together like work in the garden. I think I started around age three. I probably was pulling the plants out instead of the weeds, but he, we, my father just worked all the time and and you weren't to rest it, it sitting and resting and reading wasn't allowed so it was just totally the opposite of these pictures but i love my father dearly and i certainly think him but work was the important thing for him well and pastor you're lucky your father could read uh, we had to read to him. I'll get that to her next time. Oh, save the turtles. No, I'm not. Save. All right, let's look at the next slide. I have a couple more pictures. Maybe that will be inspiring or not. Can I say something about the, the one with the embrace makes me think of forgiveness? Yes. Mm -hmm. I appreciate yeah, definitely. that. Definitely. Uh, for me, I when my when my parents got divorced, I remember a lot of opportunities for. Uh, my dad was a lot more open since the two of us were living together, and taught me a lot about forgiveness. And uh, that was a that's something that picture brought to mind. as children obey your parents. Yeah, so this is something that you often hear in children's sermons, but I want you to think about it from an adult perspective. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So give me some thoughts, either you as an adult looking back and or you as a parent with children. Parents, obey your children. In the Lord. Well, you can think I, have, I have a real struggle with honoring the mother and father. Um, I continue to have a relationship with my mother, but it's very dysfunctional and it's very difficult for me. Um, years ago, therapists wanted to facilitate like an actual separating from my mother. But do that because of, you know, the biblical honoring of your parents. So, um, you know, it's a struggle. It's a struggle for me, but I, you know, I've made that to continue. The relationship. I'd hoped things would change. I always hoped things would get better. You know, it has not, but that's okay. 
<laughs> it is what it is. So I just take care of myself. I, I try to keep my boundaries for that relationship. But if I had obeyed my mother continuously in my life, I probably wouldn't be around right now. So maybe, Cindy, you did what Ethan suggested. Ethan read it the other way and said, parents, obey your children in the Lord. I think that's what I heard Ethan saying. Your children, obey your on request. <laughs> Any other comments, anybody? No. I think sometimes we take these out of context. You know, the, uh, the commandment of honor your father and mother is meant to be a reciprocal, uh, one of, of mutual uh, protecting and caring and nurturing. And sometimes we take it out of context and see it from one direction instead of both. And there's, there's more than one way of honoring. Uh, I like to think that my way of honoring is everyone on both sides of the family come to me for any genealogy information because I love going into it. Um, so to me, that's my way of honoring them and their parents before them. And I'm happy to do it for anybody else who wants to dig into it too. <laughs> All right, let's look at the next picture. So what other stories in the Bible make you think, what do you think of when you think Father's Day, fathers, what are some other Bible stories with fathers? My favorite one is when Joseph and his brothers are reunited and they bring their father back to Joseph in Egypt and they, become family again. Good one. You have the push between uh, David and Jonathan. Abraham and Isaac. What was that, Jan? Uh, that was Sue. Abraham okay. and Isaac. Ah, Abraham and Isaac. Mm-hmm. Just the baptism. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. Excellent. You know, I think of Joseph, you know, Mary's husband, leading Mary to give birth to Jesus. I mean, he was like the first step parent, you know, and, you know, amazing that he did what he did. I don't think he gets enough credit sometimes. Um, agreed. Agreed. Totally. I, I you know, and as step as a step parent, um, you know, step parents don't get a lot of credit sometimes. Not that I'm looking for that or anything, but you know, I think um, Joseph was, you know, a heck of a guy. Come on, pretty good. Come on. Actually, Cindy, I have a Holy Family statue sitting in my hallway. I have some pictures again that actually I think you, you said all the ones that I have in the next two sets of slides. But let's take a look at those with some Bible stories that I thought of and found some pictures, most of them from my art thing. Um, so, so the one on the left, anybody know that guy? Oh. No, nope. Moses. It's Moses. Oh, so he, I think he's pretty much a father figure there for the nation of Israel. Uh, and then in the top right one, 
Abraham and Isaac. Abraham and Isaac. Mm -hmm. In the bottom one, I'm not sure that he's the one that we jumped to for a role model. Job? No. Yeah, see it right. Sorry. Uh, in the back, you can't see too well, but in the back, there's fire on a city. Oh, Lot. Salem and Gomorrah. It's Lot. Ah, it is Lot, leading his daughters out of the city. And in the, oh, kind of like middle background, there's a path and there is a, a statue or a rock or something right in the middle of it's that path. Salt. It is salt. Yes. Lot's wife, of course, who turned around and looked. Um, so, yeah. And again, I'm not sure that Lot is our prime. Oh, nicely done. <laughs> not sure that he's our prime father figure, but yeah, I like the painting and there's a lot that you can do with it. So it's a, a good creative writing painting. <laughs> can I ask Kathy, are, on Moses's head, are those horns? Um, I don't know. We've got to go back to that. That's a statue to... that's in Rome by Michelangelo. I did something or other with my slick little annotation. <laughs> yeah, I think they are horns, but I don't remember what the significance is. I, I was just reading about something about Moses with horns, but I, I have to look it up. Well, well it looks you know, like I know sometimes what, what comes up with the horns is the word for the horns of an altar or sometimes um, like the edges of the altar have been translated as horns. So there's some altars that have horns. I've never seen Moses with horns, but maybe that's part of the connection. Hmm. Or maybe it's cat ears. <laughs> that's what it looks like. It looks like one of those head stands. <laughs> Did they have them back then? Yeah. Dress, dressed up for a <laughs> I mean, I look more at the muscles. Look at the muscles and the veins in his arms. He's an Ivy nurse's paradise. I mean, <laughs> the heck with the horns. So you're, you're just waiting to get inside there, right? <laughs> and I'm Phil, what do you think about that beard? Or Dennis? Well, I think there's uh, an awful lot to clean there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could hide a lot of stuff in that. Good. Yeah. <laughs> and the sideburns. Heavens, the sideburns come clear down. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see if we can pick on another fabulous artist. Oh, the sorry, the circles don't go away. <laughs> Let me go get rid of those. All good. <laughs> All right. So, what do you think? Who do we have there on the left? Jesus. Joseph. Joseph. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the top right. That almost looks like a coat of many colors. That's what I was going to oh, say. Well They're taking the coat to um, Jacob. It's Joe. It they're taking right. it to Jacob after um, Joseph was, after they sold Joseph away. And yeah, they, when they're, they're telling him that Joseph is dead. Oh, I, th I thought this was Esau in the back, that it would be Jacob and Esau with Isaac. No, nope. this one is the, at least it was supposed to represent the coat of many colors. So uh, coming back and saying, hey, here's the coat and we don't have Joseph. Wow. And of course, father is not very happy, we can see in the painting. Oh, sure. Joseph was his favorite. Right. And how about the bottom right? Is that Isaac? Can you see that? No. Or, or um, Jacob and Esau. Could be. It's not, though. Uh, is it 
Joseph. No? No idea. So it's supposed to represent King David on his deathbed. And with whom is he speaking then? Solomon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he took over yeah. David. Yeah. So we don't usually think of David that way. We think of David like the, you know, the Michelangelo statue, like with with the strong muscles. But of course, David died too. Yeah, we all get old. <laughs> Indeed. Keep it nice. And even though we're wrinkled, God still loves us. <laughs> That's why wrinkled is better. Nice connection. And let's look at the last slide, please. How can we honor our All right, so how can we honor our earthly fathers today and every day? Be nice. Be Be nice. Good answer. Give them what do Give them gifts. <laughs> rhubarb pie. Yeah. That, that's exactly what we're doing, Marianne. We're having rhubarb pie with ice cream. <laughs> oh, we're doing clam bakes to help rid the world of those bottom dwellers. <laughs> <laughs> And since, like I say, since I don't, my father is gone to me, uh, it's the genealogy. And considering that my fifth great grandfather helped to start Zion Space churches, I am still into it. Cool. Honor our earthly fathers. Anybody else have anything you want to say? Because that's my last slide. I'll be done. <laughs> <laughs> nice job. Very yeah. good. Can I, can I give a, a little story, especially with what Cindy mentioned about a step parent? Absolutely. Um, of course, Jack is the step parent of my four children. Um, and he helped raise them. Uh, my daughter was 11, and my youngest was six when Jack and I met. Um, the youngest and Jack, father and son, sometimes clash, disagree. Both Jack and Jimmy were very intelligent. Both have the same ideas, but they clashed quite a bit. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, as an adult, was in a situation. Um, he and uh, uh, Pilar were together for five years and she had a five-year-old son when they met. So he was in a stepfather position. And when they were up in the years that they were together before they finally did uh, get apart, um, Jimmy went to Jack and said, you know, Pop, when I was a kid, I know we didn't get along, he said, but if it weren't for you, I wouldn't have had any idea how to behave properly. Uh, he said, everything that you did as a step parent was wonderful. And now that I'm in this situation, I can appreciate things that you did that I know I gave you problems with. So, he said that was the most wonderful thing any any kid could have given him as a gift. Mm -hmm. There he said, Keith, and those are the gifts you can give your father. Not not gifts that you buy, the other gifts. It, it, um, yeah, yeah, that was a very valuable gift to Jack, right? All right, folks, then I thank you for your kind attention. Thank Su you. You're thank you. Yeah. All right. Su Susie, is it 